Hello, and welcome to this latest installment of the Mozu webinar series. Today, we're joined by Forrester Research to bring you Moving Beyond Mobile, delivering a seamless digital experience from online to in-store. My name is John Hessinger, Vice President of Marketing for Mozu, and I will be today with moderator. Uh, today's webinar is scheduled for an hour. We will leave time for Q&A at the end, so please feel free to submit questions along the way. All right, so let's get into the content. I'm very excited to introduce today's presenters. First off, we're joined by Adam Silverman, Principal Analyst with Forrester Research, who will guide us through the rapidly changing customer expectations facing retailers today and beyond. In second position, we'll hear from Jason Wallace, Chief Technical Officer for Mozu, who will share how innovative technology can actually help retailers meet the growing demands of omnichannel shoppers. So with that, I'll hand it off to Adam. Great. Thanks, John, and good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for joining us today and taking time out in your schedule to, uh, to be with us. Again, my name is Adam Silverman. I'm a principal analyst here at Forrester. I've been with Forrester for uh, just over a year now and actually have spent most of my career uh, in retail, both uh, running e-commerce and online marketing teams for uh, brands such as Target, Musician's Friend, and Wet Seal. And so I cover commerce technology at Forrester. That includes not only the customer uh, behavior, but also um, the technology that is um, you know, feeding that customer behavior and enabling uh, those, those experiences and engagement um, with those digital customers. Um, and so we're here today to talk about moving beyond mobile, and, and I'm going to kick it off by talking about some of the um, trends around customers. So um, we see the pace of change um, is accelerating quite rapidly. In fact, Blake Nordstrom uh, recently uh, mentioned this in uh, a press release. Um, so Nordstrom is also feeling that pace of change and feeling like it's moving faster uh, than anticipated a year ago. In fact, um, you know, I've, I was part of the dot-com rise back in the in the in the 90s, and today it's more dynamic. It's more complex than when e-commerce started. Um, we have legacy systems and rapidly changing customer expectations, which makes um, this a very dynamic and, and challenging, but uh, also uh, filled with opportunities um, at this, this point in time. Next slide, please. And when we look at the role of the physical location, there have been no indoor malls been built since 2006. Uh, in fact, it's stated that 15% are going out of business over the next 10 years. Now, this doesn't mean that the role of the store is going to die. It just means that the, um, the, the, the purpose of the store is actually a little, a little bit different, and um, the customer behavior is actually quite different as well. Customers are, are uh, pre-shopping ahead of time uh, before they enter uh, the store. Um, and, you know, for the most part, store experiences are, are antiquated. We have very little data um, about customers and their behavior in stores. Um, we also have associates that are, um, you know, don't necessarily have the latest technology and access to information that can be found in today's modern e-commerce applications. Um, so although today's experiences are antiquated, uh, you know, when we look at some of these examples of modern shopping experiences, I, you know, I wonder if this kind of engagement where you're taking a, you know, scanning a QR code uh, for a picture of an item that's in a subway station, I wonder if this is meeting uh, customer needs. Um, does that really provide that engagement that customers expect? Next slide, please. And so the agenda for today, we'll talk about first the evolving digital customer. I'll, I'll share some data with you. Uh, we'll then discuss how retail is changing uh, into digital engagement. It's not just about the transaction. And then uh, we'll have our, our Mozu partners uh, discuss new experiences that require a modern architecture. Next slide, please. And looking at this slide, this is some data that we have at Forrester. You know, again, we're talking about the customer and their changing behaviors. This is what it looks like from a tablet in terms of where customers uh, are using their tablet. For the most part, it's done at home. Uh, the living room is is obviously the uh, you know the place that you're going to do your couch surfing, and and it's it, you use your tablet outside of the home. A little bit, but uh, mainly it's a it's a home device. But if you look to the right, it's to the smartphone. 
you see much more um, you know, rounded activity in terms of where customers are using their devices. And I wanted to bring this up because the in-store piece at 68%, uh, it's basically at the bottom left if you look at the um, at the graph on the right, you'll see that uh, you know in-store is actually the, the largest, um, you know, one of the largest areas of usage for for smartphones. Now, it doesn't mean that they're actually customers are actually engaging in um, you know price shopping and and and, and you know showrooming, and they're, they're certainly doing some of that. Uh, there's some other activities that customers are doing as well. So it's not it's this is not indicating that all 68% of those uh, of the population is doing price checking, but the reality is that the digital engagement in the physical location is is changing and customers actually expect that digital engagement in the stores. Next slide. And I wanted to put this in here. This is a slide that talks about customers having high expectations when it comes to channel integration. Um, this is a series of data points um, that all lead up to one number, which is if you look at the bottom red, you see that 60% of your customers expect some sort of omni-channel services or integration. And that 60% is actually referring to the middle bottom bucket, which is reserve online and pick up in store. Um, everything else is actually much higher. Even if you look at the top right, you're viewing local store inventory online at 89%. That's absolutely critical. So when we think about the channel integration from the customer perspective, no longer can you have separate channels that operate independently. They need to work together. And that's a, that's a, that's a very important uh, function for both the e-commerce platform as well as other systems such as order management. And those customers want it quick. They expect this integration. They also expect the performance of these digital devices and uh, e-commerce sites to, um, to be very quick and, and meet their needs immediately. And performance absolutely does matter. So when we think about uh, you know, this slide from Walmart, uh, they found that when load times jump from one second to four seconds, conversion rates decline sharply. And for every second of improvement, uh, they experience up to a 2% conversion increase. So creating a responsive site that's nimble and agile is going to be a requirement for meeting customer expectations both on the web as well as on mobile phones as well. And what this really leads to as we go to the next slide is that empowered customers are giving rise to a new era. All right, we, we, and I think we all pretty much know this, um, and for those that watched the Apple announcement yesterday, you can even see more innovation around empowering the customer to not just simply use their device for, for an experience, but actually for engagement, for uh, making their life more convenient, um, and, uh, you know, just being that personal assistant, if you will, both, um, you know, engaging uh, with content, but also around purchasing, as you saw with the Apple Pay announcement yesterday. So we see this with customers. Their, uh, their, their expectations are changing, and they, and they have higher expectations of the retailers they work with. However, firms are not quite yet set up for success. Although 74% of companies that we surveyed stated that they think they have a digital strategy, 34% of executives think their firm, only 34%, I should say, think their firm has the right strategy, and only 16% of executives feel their firm has the skills and resources necessary to deliver. So we have a gap. We have a gap between what customers expect, and we have a gap from what retailers in particular are, 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 being, are able to um, provide in order to meet those customer expectations. So that's, that's the role of um, the evolving digital customer. If we go to the next slide, um, we could start talking about the, the next section here um, as the slide comes up. And this is just referring to the agenda. I don't, um, I'm don't. i showing a blank screen. Um, okay, we, we'll skip that agenda slide. So now we're on to the next section here, which is how retail is changing into digital engagement. And this is one of my favorite data points and slides that I like to uh, review. On the left, we see that 19% of customers state the store associate is the best resource for information. 
However, 70% of those customers want an engaging brand. It's important to them. So you have this mismatch again. Customers are, are expecting that engagement and that high level of experience. However, the associate is not quite the, ready to provide that level of, of experience and, and that level of engagement. And I think that's a, that's a fairly big disconnect. Um, partially that's because of legacy trends around reducing store associates and trying to save money. Um, but a big part of that is just the evolution of the customer and their usage of digital devices in, in stores. And for the most part, retailers have been slow to respond to meet those demands of those customers. So this is how it sort of flows out in terms of the data coming from customers. And so when we think about retail, so retail is becoming connected. We think about the store. Uh, you, you can use your smartphone to look up product information. You, uh, you have been able to use your smartphone to pay through a digital wallet, and Apple just upped the game yesterday with their Apple Pay. So the connected world in the store is going to be uh, a significant trend that we'll see um, over the next few years. Um, and it's not just the customer. It's also the associate and the way the store operates as well. Next slide, please. The store also becomes social. Um, you, this is a, an example of Nordstrom using uh, Pinterest to uh, connect the digital and the physical worlds together, providing that guidance from the digital channel um, and providing, um, again, that guidance in the physical space with indicating uh, where products are most favored on Pinterest. And that's, a, I think, a great example of how uh, the store is becoming more social, leveraging social content uh, from digital channels. Next slide. One area that I cover quite often uh, here at Forrester is around omni-channel fulfillment. And you know, Best Buy is one of the examples that we tout as a, as a, as a fairly good example for, uh, for uh, providing that omni-channel experience and primarily around ship from store. So when we think about the store, the store is actually driving service. It's not just necessarily a place where you come and explore. A lot of times you can actually do that now at home or on your mobile device before you get into the store. But the store is becoming service. And when it comes to omni-channel fulfillment, which is in this case shipping products from the store to, for an online order, Best Buy is able to improve uh, their delivery by two full days to those customers. So uh, from a customer perspective, you're actually getting the product quicker and it's more meaningful, that experience. Next slide. And digital also creates influence. This is probably one of the most important pieces of data that we're going to share with you today. And what this is saying is when we look at the graph, we can see the top dark blue bar is just pure offline sales. The thin light blue bar at the bottom is pure online sales, but it's that chunk in the middle um, that is what we call web-influenced offline sales. It's actually not just web, meaning you're doing it at home. It's actually digital, uh, so you can be using your mobile phone um, before shopping in order to influence that purchase. But what this is saying is that middle bar is that digital is not just about conversion. If we just look at pure e-commerce sales, we're, we've probably all heard the stats, it's roughly around 10% of total retail. But looking at the influence, today the 52% of sales are influenced by digital channels. They either happen in those digital channels or they're influenced by those digital channels. And that's really important. So that really speaks to the role of digital as being an influencer within the physical world. And again, these, these worlds are combining. It's not just about uh, having channel-specific uh, experiences. It's making sure that as customers are engaging uh, both in the store and online, um, as you can see here with the data, and by the way, that number is just increasing to 59% in 2018, um, that integration between digital and physical is absolutely critical. Uh, again, this is probably one of the most important slides to showcase the influence of digital on physical sales. Next slide. And this is something when we think about the experience and moving towards engagement, you know, there's, there is a difference. We talk about customer experience a, a, a lot within the industry, and, you know, that is – 
that is certainly a, uh, you know, it's a role that most organizations have, and customers are looking for a great experience, but I think the next evolution of that is really shifting to engagement, right? So experience maybe being one way with engagement uh, being two ways, right, where the retailer is interacting in some way uh, with the customer and elevating that experience um, to uh, a higher level of engagement. And what we see within the industry is those rock star retailers are driving engagement by these four primary areas, aligning the organization. So first, making sure your organization is able to understand behavior across channels, investing in digital technology, uh, that's including uh, ship from store and responsive design, uh, enabling the associate. So how do you power that associate to move from only being 19% relevant to obviously much higher? And then unifying the entire experience, making sure that customer is getting the experience across the same experience or, or a personalized experience across all uh, channels and touch points. Next slide. So the first section, we think about how those progressive retailers are um, creating engagement. They think internally first around their organization. Are they set up correctly in order to meet customer needs? And if we can go to the next slide, I'll show you the uh, some data points. It's, it's This is an interesting one. We're looking at marketing and IT, and I think if you hit next twice, you'll see that expand out. So back in 20, oh, if we can go back one more, I think it'll show it. Everything expanded. That was Oh, gosh, tricky. Let's see if we can get that opened up all the way. Perfect, right there. Excellent. So in 2011, so the question here is, agree or strongly agree, marketing IT select and deploy technologies jointly. In 2011, uh, much, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a much lower number, but certainly we've made improvements. 2013, those integration, uh, the, the partnership between marketing IT is higher than in 2011. It still has a long way to go. And the reason why this is important is because, as we've seen earlier, the role of technology to meet customer needs is increasing. And, and that is critical for both IT and marketing to understand the customer expectations and deliver and deploy technologies, whether it's app or responsive design site or, or a new e-commerce platform, uh, to deploy those technologies that's going to meet customer needs. So this number needs to shoot more to the right, and we're getting there, but you can still see that there's some room for growth. And I use this as a proxy for how organizations are aligning. And one final thought, you, you see companies like Neiman Marcus that have uh, sort of abolish the channel view and are going for a single P&L or a single view of performance, not just from uh, a financial perspective, but also from uh, an organization perspective. Next slide. So we're going to dig into investing in digital technologies. So this is number two in terms of what Rockstar retailers are doing. If we can move to the next slide. A few, a few data slides here to uh, that you can use in, in, your, in your own uh, business cases as you build with your organizations. So multi-channel ex excellence requires investment in multiple capabilities. This is what uh, a response that we got last year when we asked, um, you know, how are you implementing or when do you plan on implementing the following multi-channel capabilities? By far, in-store inventory and ship from store and some of those omni-channel pieces high on the priority list. Again, this, is, this was a survey from last year. We still find that many, many retailers and organizations are focusing there. Um, but if you expand one more time, if you click next, you'll see I highlight on the bottom here, uh, in-store mobile and tablet point of sale. If you look at the within the next 12 months and 24 months, this is a very high area. So this is the period that we're entering now in terms of enabling the store associate to have access to inventory and content that can live in different systems. That content can live within e-commerce, can live within content management, but empowering that associate is what's on the horizon in terms of priorities for retailers. Next slide. And I know we're talking about agility and, and creating, you know, a, a you know, moving beyond mobile, uh, but it's really important for me to discuss what I think is one of the hottest and, and strongest uh, investment areas within retail today, which is, uh, you know, ship from store. And again, rolling up to that omni-channel or, or enterprise fulfillment capabilities. 
So the reason why companies focus on a shift from store program, you know, I'm actually going to start with number two, which is meeting missed demand. We're seeing retailers get upwards to 30% lift in incremental sales on their online channel just by implementing store fulfillment. And what that does is when a retailer is out of stock, they can leverage their store inventory. But these are the other areas that are also important. So enabling uh, to sell store exclusive inventory, reducing store markdown, so you're getting rid of product just before it goes on sale, what I call at-risk product. Optimizing shipping costs, again, with Best Buy shipping from your local store, potentially that can be cheaper than fulfilling from your distribution center. Uh, reducing delivery time of those orders and potentially enabling same-day delivery. Next slide. And when we, when we think about the role of the website and the role of digital commerce, there's a high priority for uh, responsive web design. This is from a new survey that we did uh, this year, clearly indicating that um, you know, personalization technology along with mobile integration and responsive design lead the pack when it comes to investment areas uh, for 2014 and beyond. And again, hopefully you can see the connection here between having that singular experience from customers, enabling them and associates uh, with mobile devices and enabling that content on those mobile de devices, and then making sure that the content is able to be deployed and, um, and consumed in a very agile way. Next slide. We talked a little bit about the associate, and so the third section that, that those rock star retailers are focusing on for engagement is focusing on the associate. If we go to the next slide. And primarily there's four new areas, maybe not all of them are new, but these are the four areas that, re, that the associate needs to evolve and to move into. Uh, traditionally, the associate has uh, done a lot of the operational functions on the bottom right, um, but as they become mobily enabled, um, they get to actually do some of those operational capabilities on their mobile devices. That could be task management, that could be um, you know, getting analytics on the performance of their associates or themselves. But the other three are really more about that customer engagement. Uh, starting at the top left, the associate with a digital device will be able to learn about their customers with direct connections to CRM systems, understand their past purchase behavior, uh, understand their browse behavior online, for instance. What are they, what's interesting to that customer and how can you help them? The assist section on the top right is really about pulling up product information, product reviews, and videos to do co-shopping and assist that customer make a decision. And then bottom left is around buying. That's the omni-channel fulfillment. Is there inventory in this store or some other store? And potentially being able to take the order in aisle through mobile point of service. Next slide. And this is no joke. When we think about certain categories, 66% of luxury shoppers are more likely to shop or interact with sales associates who are equipped with mobile devices. I don't currently see that on my screen. I wonder if uh, maybe you all do, but uh, the slide that if, if you don't see it would say that just simply that 66% of luxury shoppers want that digital associate. And so for those, in, so those categories that uh, are considered purchases, it's absolutely critical to have digital experiences and engagement on mobile devices for associates. And then the final section here, what Rockstar, Re Rockstar retailers are doing is unifying the experience. If we can move to the next slide. Customers want a single point of view. They expect the store, the website, the catalog, the call center, all to be speaking in the same language, offering the same offers, and having that same personalized experience. So when we ask customers, which of the following do they expect when making a purchase, they, number one by far is to find the same pricing for products, whether they are, allow, are offered in store or on the website, so having that price parity, uh, to find the same promotions and deals, as well as having the store staff to be knowledgeable about all the products, including those that may only be sold online. So the first priority is absolutely around product and pricing. Um, and, and I would actually also add maybe a secondary one would be product information. Um, and then finally, third, having the associate be knowledgeable. 
Uh, that's what customers are really looking for in any touch point, and that requires a new breed of associate that has access to new agile systems, and then again, the content to be presented to them in an agile way. Next slide. When we think about responsive web design as one of those capabilities, that helps drive a unified experience. Uh, build, the, build the experience once, make sure that you're accounting for those di different um, devices, and streamlining the uh, deployment and maintenance of that experience to create a unified view from the customer. So responsive, we're seeing an uptick, we, as we saw from the data previously, this is becoming a higher priority, and customers are beginning to expect that experience. Two more slides, if we can move on. Great, thank you. A little bit more of a technical view. Great, thank you for expanding that out. So we look at the top, we're looking at the, all the touch points that customers engage with, whether it's kiosk, web, or mobile. Um, in the middle we have, that's where the commerce application sits, um, and that's tightly coupled with order management, and that is actually acting as the connective tissue to back-end enterprise systems such as CRM and loyalty and merchandising. So there's a greater emphasis being played on the commerce application today than ever before. And it's not just web, it's in all touch points. And again, that goes hand in hand with order management as well. But those two pieces are absolutely critical, that commerce, that agile new breed of commerce application coupled with order management. And one final slide before I turn it over, just a bit of a summary. So what it means, omni-channel fulfillment efforts like endless aisle, ship from store, and ship to store are essential for retailers and brands in the future. And I'll maybe even cross out in the future and say today, we see this as the number one investment area driving uh, real results. Mobile will play a major role in retail, both for customers and associates. We saw, again, more investment in mobile payment uh, even yesterday with Apple's announcement. We see less about the role of associates uh, coming from the industry, but trust me, that is a big area. If you think about where the expenses for retailers in terms of headcount, the store associate is, is, a, is, a, is an asset that's expensive but also critical, and bringing that associate up to date to enable engagement, not just the experience, but engagement is absolutely critical. Three, engagement must be elevated and cannot be channel focused. I think we pretty much get that uh, from the data that I presented. And then four, agility is mandatory. This is not just agility from an organizational perspective or agility from agile development. It's the whole, it's everything. It's being able to try new ideas quickly, to have a team that's focused on solving business challenges, but then also a platform that's going to allow you to deploy those new experiences quickly. Okay, so that's a lot of information I know, but with that said, I think Jason, it's now uh, now turning it over to you. Thanks a lot, Adam. I uh, really enjoy uh, you know that overview and uh, that kind of view of the details and the data behind. I think what a lot of retailers are feeling and experiencing, and you know, as we've engaged with with folks at Forrester and had discussions um, with with other retailers. That's the common thread that we've been hearing for a while is it's a tidal wave of change that's kind of happening outside of my control, and it's being driven by this consumer adoption of technology. So it's not, you know, brands or retailers driving this and trying to force things. It's trying to catch up in this rapidly shifting uh, environment. And, you know, consumers' behavior and how they interact with each other through social and spilling over into how they interact with brands um, is really driven multi-channel to become what we now call omni-channel and just stressing all the systems that have been in place for many years in how brands interact with shoppers. So it's, it's really bigger than just technology. This, this change is forcing change on retail that's bigger than just technology. Um, it is organizational change, how you, measure, um, how you measure the customer's journey, how you measure internally and motivate, but there's a, there's a large technology component to it as well. Um, and so, you know, one common thread is that legacy technology really does limit change and complexity is the killer of agility. Um, so organically grown systems that frankly have been built for a different era um, and integrated together over many years are really struggling to enable the kind of digital experiences and customer experiences that are being demanded by 
customers today. Um, these mismatched architectures really increase operational cost um, and they slow down the pace of change. In some cases, it gets really perverse and we've seen this fear mentality where organizations fear change um, because they don't get rewarded for trying to make change because it's ineffective in a very complex legacy environment. That leads to people trying to bolt on specialized solutions um, to solve, for example, mobile experiences on top of legacy platforms. And that will get you so far, but in the end, it really is about finding technologies and, and an architecture that, will, that more cleanly meets kind of the realities of the marketplace today. Just to touch briefly on kind of how we got here, um, you know, it really started, e-commerce in the 90s was about the blocking and tackling. It's how do I accept payments? I need to get a product catalog online. I've got differing browser standards I have to deal with. Um, mobile uh, became important, but it was that inflection point of the iPhone um, in 2007 followed quickly by Android when we gained a touch-enabled tiny computer in the palm of our hand it was a huge inflection point for, for shopping and purchasing behavior. And I don't think we even acknowledged it at the time, but having consumers that are empowered to do more and more on the go, and now we have to contend also with these different viewports and different um, interfaces has really stressed all, this, all of the systems that, that we've had in place today. If you look at the successful platforms that are out there today, um, and a lot of them were built well before this inflection point. So this is where we find, we've heard this mantra over and over, is I've made big investments in my commerce platform, but now I'm struggling to really solve the problem that my customers are demanding that I solve today. And it's really because they were built well before this inflection point happened, uh, the adoption of that, that modern smartphone platform. And what's needed today is a, is a platform that is more open, that has natively built support for the challenges that we're facing. It's about the customer journey, and I, Adam, you touched on that, and I think that's really kind of the central theme behind what we're talking about today. It's really not about how to solve for mobile, and that's been a big discussion point in the past, you know, 18 to 24 months is how do I provide a better mobile experience? But if you look along really kind of where the customer is interacting with us, there's so many different touch points, in-store, in kiosk, desktop, you know, mobile browser, native mobile applications, um, chat with customer service, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it's, it's a myriad of touch points and it's gone well beyond just, I need a good mobile experience and I need a good desktop experience. I have to consider the entire customer journey. And the architecture that enables that, frankly, is an architecture that has an understanding that the key is providing visibility to all the customer interactions at each point along that journey, be that in-store or online, um, providing visibility into inventory, wherever it lives. There's no such thing as channel in the customer's mind. It's not really omni-channel, it's unchannel. I just want to interact with you. I really don't care about how you manage your supply chain. Um, so how do we adapt to that? We need an architecture that kind of acknowledges that. It's got to be open. It has to be able to serve content in all of these customer touch points and be managed in a way that, that a team can effectively manage it. Just because customers now want to digitally interact with brands in seven different ways, doesn't mean that a brand can hire seven different teams and duplicate their content seven different times. That's not an effective strategy. It doesn't scale and lead to quality issues. Forget the margin side of it. So the platform has to enable you to very efficiently manage content across all those different um, touch points. Responsive is absolutely a cornerstone to that, to that journey. And I think, we, you know, it's hard to miss when you're, when, you're, when you're reading in the industry today about how important responsive is. That ability to efficiently manage different experiences that are tailored to a different viewport. I need to serve up just the information that's needed at the time. I can't have multiple code bases. I need one team to maintain it. I need to be able to have a performant SEO enabled experience. That is a critical, critical piece. I'm gonna be honest with you though, if you're only focused on responsive, it's not a panacea. It doesn't solve everything. You really can't handle, you can't solve with the current technology, it's, you're gonna to struggle to solve this multi-browser, multi-viewport experience without responsive. So it's an absolutely essential piece, but it's just not the end all be all because the customer journey involves much more than just my tablet and my desktop or my tablet and my phone. It's much more encompassing than that. 
And just reinforcing kind of, I think, the point and, and that great data you had, Adam, is, you know, the, the associate is, is, has the opportunity to be such a key brand ambassador and empower purchases on the behalf of customers. And we have a platform, this mobile platform, that now customers have an expectation that associates are going to have that same technology they have on their device and be able to go even further and provide a much more tailored experience. So the architecture for, day, for today has to have as a first-class citizen this notion of being able to have tablet-enabled mobile applications that provide the associates with all that inventory data, all the customer data, all the product data. They're there to be a huge ambassador as the customer goes through that journey. Modern platform has to have tools that, that very quickly enable that um, and, and, are, and efficiently um, can be managed efficiently by a retailer. Thirdly, you think about the journey, and I want to just kind of paint a scenario here of what that customer journey involves. Let's, let's say for a moment that I am a, an eyewear retailer, and my customer's journey begins obviously well before they ever hit my store. And let's say that I, they, they know they need new eyeglasses, they're using uh, mobile and tablet devices to browse a large selection inventory that I have for my glasses. They narrow it down to six or seven styles. Now they want to come into the store and actually make a purchase. From that point, they add those six or seven styles to a virtual bag, um, schedule an appointment with a store, um, show up at the store. The store is, knows what they have. They, their appointment is connected to their bag. They've pulled those particular products, and they're ready to sit down and go through a fitting exercise and very quickly empower them um, through, that, through that part of the journey. Uh, from there, if there happens to be another frame option that's on the store, you get a very unique digital experience in the store. In this case, we might have a Connect-enabled um, experience that allows someone to preview what eyeglasses would look like um, right there on their face, even though they don't have the physical product in the store. The customer can make a selection and complete the purchase in any traditional channel that a retailer might see. It can be, we'll ship those to your house, we'll have them ready for you an hour, whatever that needs to be. But that whole experience, that whole journey, you have to think of completely. And your platform has to be able to empower and enable the content, the product catalog information, the inventory, the customer data, the interaction history. Everything that that customized experience needs, the platform has to be able to provide efficiently and, and, and effectively. Building on that, I think content really is kind of the king and the heart of providing um, the digital, digital experience to the customer. A lot of content is going to be sourced internally. Some is going to be sourced externally. But I, the platform has to be able to serve that content in all the different touch points we've talked about in a consistent way as the, as the customer goes through her journey. It can't be a disconnected experience. You lead the quality issues when content is out of sync, pricing is out of sync, et cetera. So sourced from many, many different places, come into a central interface that can be managed and published and then distribute it out to all the touch points. That's how you can manage effectively content from multiple sources and provide engaging experiences to customers and increase revenue. The, 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 real, the real key factor is that um, as, as a technology, at Mozu what we've focused on is building a platform that is well aware of the realities that are, that are going on in the market today um, that doesn't treat mobile as a sidecar to the desktop experiences that is well aware of the entire customer journey and is able to be open and interface with um, systems that are already in place today, um, inventory systems, ERP systems, point of sale, et cetera, to provide the critical digital experience and that digital commerce experience throughout that entire journey. Mozu is also a SaaS platform, so a distinct advantage that we have um, being SaaS is that ability to adapt and move quickly. And in times of agility and great change, when innovation is needed, you don't have to wait for a new, you know, installation of a new version of an installed piece of software to take advantage of features that are delivered. SaaS really is, as we've, as we've come to know, um, the, most, the optimal platform in times of great innovation. From a, uh, you know, Really, just kind of this, this slide really reiterates, you know, what I just said about B2B 
being able to have, you know, embrace the entire customer journey, having the ability to build unique digital experiences for brands, um, optimize them for the viewport and the devices that they're, they're intended to be used on, um, and allow that seamless transition as customers cross what, we, what they used to think of as channels and now are forcing us to not think of as channels, and bring sales associates into the entire experience and empower them um, to be ambassadors in that journey. Um, it's a very innovative solution designed for the problems of, of today's retailers with, a, with, honestly, a pricing model that, that does support success and doesn't punish um, for success. And with that, um, I think wrap up and some Q&A analysis, John? Yeah, thanks, Jason. And thank you, Adam. You know, Adam, one of the, uh, one of the very interesting data sets that I found um, from, from your presentation is you know, the vast delta between the 74% of firms that think they have a digital strategy at all, and yet 16% believe they have the skills and resources to deliver. You know, I find that particularly interesting, and um, especially as a marketer, on how big the opportunity is for retail. Um, you know, to continue to evolve and innovate their um, delivery against the modern customer expectations, and in a, by doing so, ultimately uh, gaining additional share of wallet. So, you know, very interesting takeaway for me from your presentation specifically. Um, you know, with that, we'll now move into our Q&A portion. I'm going to take a brief moment to pause and gather some questions from our participants. Thanks. So, John, I see some questions coming in regarding, you know, the skills that are missing and maybe um, dovetailing on your, 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 um, your point about the delta between um, organizations that feel that they have a strategy versus how they actually execute. So I, maybe I can jump in and um, tackle this topic because it looks like there is, there's a few questions coming in now. I could probably summarize all of these in one. So. Um, you know, when I think about, um, you know, how organizations, you know, if, if I were to ask a question, like, how do I, how would I recommend a company to organize uh, to build a digital strategy? This is actually an area that we uh, spend quite a bit of time uh, talking and helping our clients at Forrester to, to uncover. There's, unfortunately, there's not one size that fits all, but there is a common theme, and that common theme is that digital needs to be infused everywhere. It's not just one person's role. Um, in fact, we see you know these heads of omni-channel and often a, a chief digital officer uh, come in in order to sort of spearhead that initiative of getting digital infused throughout the organization. But eventually, if you think about it, digital will sort of just be, it'll just go away, meaning it's expected everyone will do it, um, everyone has to do it because their customers are engaging digitally, their suppliers, their merchant partners, the operations, I mean, everything will be sort of connected um, in a whole new way. And so therefore, digital needs to be infused throughout the organization. Um, some organizations, you know, struggle with that. They're not necessarily aligned to, um, to really, um, you know, infuse that that technology or or if that mindset through through their through their team, and often we find that um, you know there there are um, you know the the there are initial roles such as the chief digital officer that are hired in order to um, to build that. Now the the skill sets that are um, that are missing um, you know are are primarily around. It's maybe less about skill set, but it's more about philosophy and engaging uh, based upon the customer perspective rather than the technology or the channel. And thinking back to my marketing and IT partnership slide, um, you know, that's really where the skill set doesn't exist, the skill set around agility that's customer focused, right? And so um, that means that your team needs to come on board and needs to really understand um, that perspective of the customer. Um, or, it, you know, that, maybe that's a dividing line between how roles evolve, right? So um, even if you think about technology, we have this concept here at Farsha, what we call business technology rather than information technology or IT, and that um, business technology is where those business leaders are also focused on customers and enabling the organization to win, serve, and retain those customers. That's a totally different mindset than keeping the lights on and keeping the servers running, and we see increasingly that becoming a skill set, the ability to focus on the customer in all areas of the organization and partner together 
in order to deliver experiences and engagement that meet today's digital um, digital customers. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Why don't we dig into uh, Why don't we dig into this next question? Um, how have retailers effectively convinced senior management to invest in more mobile technology and build the supporting organization that you're talking about here? Well, so there's um, there's two ways. You have senior management that wants to see the numbers, and you have senior senior management that say, you know what, we know this is where it's going. We have to get there, right? If you think about the numbers piece, uh, areas like um, the omni-channel fulfillment has direct ROI. Um, so usually we find that being sort of the spear, the tip of the spear in terms of um, you know building a digital a digital practice. I also see it on the marketing side as well as you uh, start to see you know weekly printed circulars decline and readership and, and newspapers continue to decline and digital marketing sort of explode um, you know in terms of where customers are actually uh, consuming that content um, you know you can see some trends there as well. So you have that one side which is focusing on the numbers and the key is to provide a business case and think about that business case for um, you know, having inventory visibility in all channels. Um, that's I think well proven that business case. Then you have those that just you know, or maybe if you think about organizations that target younger demographics, if you think about specialty apparel, right? I'm not sure that you need any any bigger kick in the pants than think, than seeing the data on how customers interact with digital devices, especially uh, millennials. And if you want to go, you know, skate where the puck is going, or you know, and, and think about where you need to be, well, you need to have that digital engagement and that digital organization uh, in order to continue to service those types of customers. They're your future customers. So it just depends on the leader. But regardless of the approach, I mean, hopefully we all can agree that um, transformation needs to occur, and you know. And that's where agility comes in. If you're the type of organization that, you know, if you think about moving quickly, that might mean that you do not, you no longer have the ability to build a gigantic business case, right? Which means that you need a platform, a modern platform to execute quickly so you can measure results. And so we see more of that prototyping occurring versus traditional, um, you know, sort of uh, proving out the business case and rolling out slowly. I don't know if that's, that makes sense, but, um, you know, that's certainly what I see from talking with our our clients. Great. That makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, I'm going to turn this one to Jason, actually. Uh, how do you see WMS and fulfillment as an advantage to the customer experience? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And when I think about the question, it's really about how does bringing those systems and functions into the commerce experience actually provide a better experience for customers? And it, it really manifests itself in a couple of ways. And it's, it's those what have, you know, traditionally been cross-channel fulfillment um, scenarios where um, I think Best Buy was a great example where, number one, by, by sort of providing, I don't know if that was a ship from store scenario, but being able to that cut was. down, the, yeah, being able to cut down the physical delivery time frame, that's a huge customer experience advantage if I can get my products in, uh, in a much shorter time frame. I think Amazon as an online retailer has proven that with their advancements in fulfillment and being able to order things and get next day delivery of certain items. So clearly that's a customer experience benefit. I think ship to store um, is another example of that where it may be a, me a more convenient fulfillment option depending on what vertical I'm in for me to go in and get the item, pick it up at the store, have a conversation with someone and then take it from there. So I can't really effectively provide those unless my commerce platform can service up the availability as those viable options by product to the customer knowing where they are at, at that point in time. So that entire fulfillment network really has to be thought of in a different way to enable these experiences that they're becoming more the expectation um, than, than where people want to go. Great. Thank you. Um, you know, this, this question is back for Adam. Uh, you know, I see all the change you mentioned um, in your section, but I'm a retailer with limited budget and resources. Uh, and this is a, actually a great one, um, as you know, everybody who comes on to a webinar like this is, is expecting some actionable insights, right? So what is the number one new thing I should focus on delivering in 2015? Okay, so this is kind of the obligatory question um, that I get asked often because the keywords here, we have limited budget and resources, and it almost implies that there's some sort of, you know, 
top secret, easy thing to do that's going to transform your business. And the reality is there isn't, right? This is not, this is not that kind of discussion, I think. I, I, I don't know that, I don't know that it's about budget and resources per se. It's about the risk if you don't take, you know, don't, don't move ahead with transforming your organization to meet the rising expectations of customers. That risk is much greater than uh, potentially, um, you know, spending more than you thought this year, for instance. So I just want to point that out. Um, but with that said, you know, if there is one area that I see the most investment in and the, and the biggest return, it is the omni-channel or the enterprise fulfillment capability, specifically without, around inventory visibility. And I'll give you another stat. Um, it wasn't in the deck here, but um, so a third of customers won't even go into a store unless they can check the inventory visibility online first. So you might actually have the product in your store, but if you don't expose that inventory online, there's potential. There's a potential that a third of your customers won't even get into your store. That's significant, right? So those are the things that I like to see organizations focus on is focusing on the product. Customers actually, you know, first and foremost, they want to find the right price and the right product, and you need to help them. And by doing so, that means exposing inventory in the enterprise whether that's inventory in stores, online, or even in the supply chain. If you, if you look at Ikea, they do a great job of telling you when an out-of-stock item will come in and then how fast it's selling down so that you can plan your trip, right? If it's selling down quickly, you could say, gosh, I need to go in tomorrow rather than wait another week. So that inventory visibility improves conversion rate and meets customer expectations. Yeah, I kind of put you on the spot there. I appreciate that. It's a, it's a very direct response for, a, for the obligatory question, as you put it. But, uh, you know, I, I think that is very actionable. <laughs> well, everybody. everybody wants it always cheap and quick, right? And I'm not sure that this is that kind of topic. We're talking about bigger things here, which is the evolution of customer behavior and how generally retailers are kind of behind, right? And, and so the approach needs to be, it's an all-encompassing approach. It's align the organization, it's think about your technology platform and think beyond your legacy, um, you know, stitch together systems to come up with, with a more modern approach to create agility. But then there's also the tactical of, hey, let's just expose our inventory online that's in the store. Yeah, I think that is what's unique about this transformation is that being customer-led, it does force it to be kind of an all-encompassing thing. This isn't regulation driving something that I need to go adopt or change. This is right. expectations are now no longer what they were six, seven years ago, and, and I've got to adapt kind of across the board and think I, about things in a different way. Yeah, I would think expectations are no longer what they were a year ago. Right. Uh, yeah. And I think and, and maybe even around you thinking about payments, right? Are people now going to expect that with their iPhone, they're just they expect the retailer to have Apple Pay enabled? I mean, that's a I don't know the answer to that question. We're going to wait and see and see what happens. But it could be it could go in that direction. Right. Especially if it's more convenient um, and it saves time. I mean, certainly exposing inventory online for store store stock, you know, availability is key because it potentially saves you a trip to that store if it's out of stock. So that's a huge time saver. So whenever you see those types of opportunities crop up, they're going to be quickly uh, embraced. Another area I think is going to be uh, changing quite rapidly is price checking and uh, you know doing product uh, research while in the aisle. And you know if you think about um, a dynamic and agile platform, you know if you're if if you're running um, a new breed of e-commerce application and your customers in your competitor's store and they pull up your site, you want it to be quick, you want it to have all the information so that if you have a better price or more product information than your competitor, the customer will actually purchase on a mobile device in your competitor's store. So it's, you know, that's the, it, that's the flow of showrooming. Some com customers leave your store, but other customers actually purchase by showrooming in your competitor's store and they use your, your website. So that's another behavior that that's going to be uh, rapidly changing and adopted by younger demographics. Absolutely, a lot to look forward to and a lot to innovate toward. Um, so it looks like we've covered the, uh, the bulk of our questions here. 
I want to close really quickly. Thank you both to Adam Silverman and Jason Wallace for, for the insight and your time. Uh, and I also want to thank you to our audience for joining us on this, the latest installment of the Mozu webinar series. Thank you all and have a great day.